Welcome back. I'm Ms. Warnow. We're going to continue um, our study here. We're, today we're going to talk about density. Density can be thought of a measure of how tightly packed a substance's molecules are. So you can have something very tightly packed together or something very loosely packed together. Substance with a high density has uh, massive particles that are closely packed, and a substance with a low density is likely to have a less massive particles that are more loosely packed. So which state of matter do you think would be the least dense? Gas, because those particles are not packed in tightly together. Um, they take the shape of their container. The most dense usually would be solid. Okay, we know from a previous unit, solids are packed in tightly together, with so gases spread out. Now, which substance would be an exception to this? Well, that would be um, ice. Ice is less dense in its solid state, so it floats in water. The density of a particular substance does not change with the amount of that substance. It is constant for the substance. So this makes density okay, intensive property. And we learned about intensive and extensive property in the previous unit. The density of a substance can be found by dividing its mass by its volume. So here's the equation for density. Mass is a measure of the quantity of matter of an object, it's normally given in grams, or you could have it in kilograms, milligrams, centigrams. Volume is the amount of space an object takes up. That's usually in milliliters, cubic centimeters, liters. And remember that one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. A cube of wood has a mass of 80 grams and a volume of 100 cubic centimeters. What is the density of the block? And so we set up here, we write down our equation. We'd like for you to write down the equation, fill it in, and then you get the answer here. And this would be 0 0.800. Paying attention to um, three significant digits here and four here, so your answer should have three. Now, if you take that and you cut it in half, now you've half your mass and you've also half your volume, but the density is still going to be 0.8 grams per cubic centimeter. So that makes density an intensive property. Let's look at a couple of examples with this. As a piece of metal with a mass of 147 grams is placed in a graduated cylinder, the water level rises from 20 to 41 mils, what is the density of the metal? So density is equal to mass divided by volume. You're looking for density. The mass is 147 grams. Now the volume is going to be the final volume minus that initial volume. Okay. And when you do that, you get 21.0. Okay. So 21.0 milliliters. And when you divide 147 by 21, you get 7.00 grams per milliliter. Paying attention to this has three sig figs, this has three sig figs, so your answer needs three significant figures. Yeah, 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 yeah. A penny has a mass of 11.2 grams. If the density of the oh, misspell here, penny is 6.12 grams per milliliter, what is the volume? So density is equal to mass divided by volume. You know the density is 6.12 grams per milliliter. The mass is 11.2 and you're looking for the volume. Okay. So what you do here mathematically is you cross multiply the 6.2 and you really don't have to show this but I'm just going to show it here to review the math. So you end up with 6.12 times V is equal to 11.2 and then what you do is divide 6.12. So the volume is going to be the 11.2 divided by the 6.12 you get 1.83 milliliters. This has three significant digits, three significant digits, so your answer is three significant digits. You're expected to write the equation, fill it in, and give us the answer with the correct number of significant digits in the correct unit. This concludes video three. Make sure you've taken good notes and come to class with any questions.